Welcome back to Dissect the Question. A 35-year-old male advertising executive is complaining to his physician of severe jaw pain that often awakens him during the night. His dentist notices tooth and gingival changes which suggest that the man is suffering from bruxism associated with jaw clenching that often occurs during sleep. It's known as temporomandibular joint syndrome. Which of the following abnormalities within the myocytes of the masseter internal lateral pterygoid and temporalis muscles is most likely to create the conditions for high temporomandibular joint contractile force in this patient? So, clearly the clinical vignette relates to the lead-in, which is the question. So, the clinical vignette, also known as the stem, talks about jaw clenching and temporomandibular joint syndrome, which is a state of what? High excitability, isn't it? Sounds like a muscle spasm. High excitability, increased excitability of the nerve, the muscle, or both. So let's see, we're now looking for in the question, which of the following within the myocytes creates the conditions for high contractile force? So there's asking us to explain this thing called bruxism. Is there a mechanism here that will explain the high contractile force? Well, let's see if anything jumps out at us. It looks like there's a mixture of things represented that are structures of the sarcomere. So we should start with a cartoon of the sarcomere, shouldn't we? Sarcomere is the area from Z-line to Z-line attached to each Z-line are thin actin filaments interdigitating with thick myosin filaments. Here's the actin, and there's the myosin. And it's the cross-bridge cycling, cross-bridge formation between the actin and myosin that creates the active tension in the muscle. Active tension. Now, if the person is at rest, their muscles may not be contracting, but they may have another kind of tension called passive tension. Passive tension occurs when the muscle has not been depolarized by the motor neuron, acetylcholine, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So we can get high tension in a muscle, either active tension or passive tension. So we have to look at both possibilities. Decreased myosin filament length. So if we decrease the myosin filament length, we're going to make the myosin shorter. And is that going to increase the cross bridging, which we said is responsible for the tension in a muscle? that draws the Z lines together, or is it going to decrease it? It seems to me that if we decrease the myosin filament length, we're gonna have less cross bridge cy cycling because there's gonna be less overlap between the actin and myosin. So I think we can eliminate that that would produce less tension. We're looking for something that's producing more tension. How about decreasing sarcomere calcium? Well, we know calcium comes into the T-tubules in response to depolarization and action potential initiated from the motor neuron, releasing acetylcholine onto acetylcholine receptors and releasing the calcium from the ryanidine channel in the sarcoplasmic reticulum to produce this cross bridging. So if we decrease sarcomere calcium, we'll have less cross bridging. 
just like if we decrease the myosin filament length. So I'm going to eliminate that as a choice. Now what about decreased troponin C activity? Well, the calcium, when it enters, to create the cross bridge, the calcium has to attach to troponin. It becomes a calcium troponin complex that forms the cross bridge. Troponin is a subunit of the actin, the thin filament. So if we decrease troponin C activity, it would produce the same effect as decreasing sarcomere calcium, wouldn't it? Less cross bridging. Well, we're left with two. Let's see what we can do with it. D, increasing actin filament length. If there was something that allowed us to increase the actin filament length, some mechanism for that, wouldn't there be more cross bridge cycling? Wouldn't there be more overlap between actin and myosin? More cross bridges? So at this point, that's jumping out at me. D, as being a mechanism for creating the conditions for high contractile force in the temporomandibular joint. Okay? Now we can't stop there because sometimes there are two answers that could be correct and we're always required to select the best one. E says increased myosin ATPase activity. So where is the myosin ATPase? The myosin ATPase is actually the subunit of myosin called heavy marrow myosin, which is responsible for producing the energy for the cross bridge cycling. So if we increase the myosin ATPase content, increase the myosin ATPase content, what would it do? ATPase is responsible for breaking down the ATP and breaking down the ATP could produce more contractile force, couldn't it? How would that work? Well, in the cross bridge cycling, we know that ATP is responsible for breaking the cross bridge, breaking the cross bridge. So more ATPase activity from myosin is actually going to generate more ATP from ADP. ADP, ADP to ATP, this becomes a cycle. And we have to, of course, add phosphate to this. We have to add phosphate to it to get ATP from ADP. So it's the myosin ATPase content that causes this cycling. And if we generated more ATP, we would do what? We would break the cross bridges. That's actually what is needed for muscle relaxation. So that's a little tricky, isn't it? I'm going to eliminate that and say that the more clear answer is that increased actin filament length is going to create more overlap between actin and myosin for more tension, more tension. Now that's active tension. We didn't talk about passive tension, we just mentioned it. We get more passive tension from a muscle when we stretch it, when we stretch it. So theoretically, if the muscle would be stretched during this man's sleep, we could also get more passive tension in the muscle, but it wouldn't be a high excitability state it would just be a mechanical thing. So bruxism is a condition of high excitability because it goes on continuously. It's not just 
stretching a muscle one time and you're getting a little bit of tension. So again, increase actin filament length, creating more cross bridging or more opportunities for overlap and cross bridging seems to be the best answer here.